What's up, fellas? What up? Ahoy. How we doing? Look at Dusty, just big, chilling, leaning back, empty picture frames on the wall. <laughs> good, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple that have some tigers in them and whatnot, but most of them are empty. <laughs> my, you know, my mother does that, like, for decoration purposes. I don't know what the point is in your area, wherever you are, but my mom. Yeah, she, she did it because she got tired of looking at an empty wall, so she figured empty picture frames are better than an empty wall. That's fair. I don't know if I agree. It's kind of psychotic. <laughs> what you got there behind you, Marvin? That's like some hotel fucking picture shit. What is that? Oh, yeah, that's default fucking Just NPC generic. picture number five. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. It's like a clarinet, I think. NPC nice. picture number five. <laughs> It's the one from the Steam fucking workshop or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Yeah. What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Episode 84, boys. Mm -hmm. Big Harsh 84. language podcast. Don't forget, Marvin. We have a website, harshlanguage.tv, where you can access all of our links to connect with us. Oh, and, I know. And also peruse some of our wares, if you choose yeah. to do so. Grab some merch. I, I, I'm thinking about we should add a fitted. Oh, well, we have you, a fitted. We as have you, a, no, we don't have a fitted. Sure do. What color is it? It's the two-tone one. The black and yellow oh, yeah, is the... I don't the, like that. I don't like that. No, that's a snapback, I'm pretty sure. Is that? Oh, yeah, you're right. It's the snapback. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. How many hats do we want, Marvin? I mean, come on. We got might have to interchange one. We'll see. We'll it's mainly see. for well, me. I only have the trucker hat. Marvin has it, too. We can't be I have the, the trucker, hat. too, but I also want the yeah. fit, fit it. I think it would okay. be pretty nice. All right. That's fair. We'll think about it. Yeah. How was uh, How was your boys' this weekend? Uh, it was cool. Yeah? The weekend was, yeah, I don't know. What all I I can't remember what I, I was reading some comics as you guys know. Uh, hey, yeah, Marvin, everybody, yeah, right. big announcement. Marvin out of the blue hit us up. It was like, yo, what X Men comic book should I read, boys? Yeah, I figured Doesn't... X Men ninety seven drops in about a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we seem to be heading into the X Men phase, the of Renaissance, Marvel. baby. <laughs> yeah, oh so, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I've, I've been reading X Men ninety one. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed the first three issues, and then I, I'm still enjoying it, but they definitely put, like, a lot more in those first three, I think, to maybe hook people in and get people excited, and it, it definitely worked. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I'm a fan of how quick each, like, storyline is. Like, it's, like, three issues, and now I'm on a different – I was on a different thing. And well, then comics. three issues later, and now yeah, short like a story arcs, thing, which is fine. But it's like they're just in, they're also in introducing way too many characters, not introducing or bringing back way too many characters. So it's a lot. Have you read comic books before? Uh, not really. <laughs> no, I'm not asking that <laughs> facetiously. I just no, mean I, like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That's I read I because used, that's like I told the, you that. um, maybe I have a tone, but it, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> No, I didn't take it that way. Because I've read. No, that's manga. the playbook they have, though. Yeah, those yeah. kind of little short story arcs. See, I've well, read you manga, might... and it's like like more of a manga is like a continuous story. Yeah, you might be more interested in like um like a a graphic novel type of thing where it's like one book. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But well, the thing there's is, there's a lot of them that are collections of like you can yeah, like so if just you find say. a character you like. Go down like the Gambit storybook arc or the Wolverine storybook arc. Yeah, yeah. I think I should maybe start solo there comics. or just do that only. I don't know. Like this is cool. Like you see everyone, but like I said, they just bringing in a lot of characters. Some I have no clue who they are, and they don't. Um, yeah, give you any any background. They kind of tell you like, oh, this came from this, which is cool. But I'm like, I'm not trying to fucking encyclopedia the fucking comics to to get the backstory. Right. Yeah. So well. It's cool, though. Really, the difference between graphic novels and comic books are just the length. Like, comics are serialized, like, short stories. Graphic novels just tend to be a little bit longer. But yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of what's considered to be graphic novels were initially serialized and just put into a collection, like Dusty just said. The Watchmen was originally released serialized. Right. And then they just put it together in a collection, a hardcover or whatever. So, yeah. um, but I guess the thing is that graphic novels do tend to have their storylines wrapped up eventually. That's where the, I think the big difference is between comics. Comics generally continue 
to go, you know, um, sort of like a TV show, like a, a TV show yeah. that has no real ending. Well, I mean, s- uh, some mangas, I mean, some mangas have been going on for thousands of fucking chapters, right? So it's not like it's a thing about yeah. it ending. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. In this particular X Men ninety one, it, it's it's not flowing that well from like arc to arc, I guess. And no, maybe I get it'll what you're saying. pick up a little bit, but well, it's jumpy. It's a little jumpy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you. But you're enjoying it, was, it overall. Yeah, I'm enjoying it overall. All right. That's cool. It's the best of times, but at the same time, it wasn't the best of times because they were passing around stories to different writers all the time. Mm-hmm. So different writers would come and go on some right. of those. Yeah. Um, I looked at like a reading order for some like X-Men and like as a whole. And I was like, there's no fucking way I'm jumping around this much. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know, like, of course, comic books are the way, but I don't know how many episodes it was in total. But honestly, the animated series that this is proceeding, like, is a great, like, entry into the X-Men. It is a lot of people my age. It's our entry into the X-Men, like a whole yeah. generation of kids who didn't read comic books got into the X-Men because of that show. It's yeah. Spider-Man, too. Yeah, I watched Six or it, seven but I was seasons, so young. like twenty, twenty some episodes of show uh, a season. Yeah. What did you watched, say, Marvin? I watched the cartoon, but I was so young. I yeah. I couldn't really tell you much about it. I vividly much. remember. Obviously, I'm a little bit older than you, but um yeah. that was like my shit. My Saturday morning was X Men, Spider Man, fucking, you know, whatever. How many years was it on? Ninety seven to what? Two thousand one or longer than that? No, it was it was this, like ninety one to ninety six was yeah. X Men. That's why the new one's called X Men ninety seven. Yes. It's so oh, picks up the right where one. Yeah. the old one oh, stopped. So yeah, I definitely have no clue because yeah. I was born in 1993. So, fucking young Thundercat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, that's been your weekend reading X Men. I like it. Yep. How about you, X-Men, Dusty? Yep. Uh, well, I went and saw Dune at the theater for a second time. I'm, oh, I'm you saw it a second it. time? Yeah, I went with my lady. We went and saw it. She hadn't seen it yet. So, we went nice. and saw it. saw it again in an IMAX again. Nice. Still amazing. <laughs> My next theater uh, experience will be this next coming weekend. Ghostbusters oh, really? after, after yeah. Ghostbusters oh, yeah. Frozen Empire. Are you going to go see it, Dusty? Yeah, I'm going to go see it this weekend. I'm very nice. excited about it. I saw... Uh, I, I have a sneaking suspicion. I don't want to... I'll say it because Marvin's not going to really know, but I have <laughs> a sneaking suspicion that there's going to be a Rick Moranis cameo in this one. Mm. Like I Probably. Have a, it wouldn't I, surprise me. I, well, he hasn't acted in like 30 years, and it would be like... It would like break the oh, fucking. Cool. It's gonna like break the internet. It's gonna be yeah. great. I just have a I have a gut feeling that that's the case. But um, but yeah. Uh, I've heard it's pretty good. I've, I I didn't read any reviews, but I saw some people who got like early screenings that were like they're doing good. Nice, nice. So you saw Dune oh, yeah. again. You watch anything else? Uh, yeah. I actually watched. Well, I watched most of Argyle. Oh, um, how was that? <laughs> Man, it's not too bad until it gets ridiculously stupid, and it's so stupid it's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> Is it, like, purposefully uh, stupid or, like... E- yeah, like, there's some choreographed fight scenes mm. where they're, like, dancing, and then there's smoke bombs and stuff going on. It's Is it's it as ridiculous. good as some of his other stuff? Um, Matthew mm, Vaughn, that is? Uh, it's not his best work. It has a 5.8 on IMDb. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, a, <laughs> but I mean, like I said, there's, there's some good things about it, but then it's like, it's so ridiculous that it's kind of stupid and kind of funny at the same time. So I don't. It's fair. It's, it's worth a watch though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you could laugh at some of that shit. I don't um, think I yeah. watched anything this week since we last talked. Um, right. Nothing wrong with that. Nah. Uh, I think the only show I'm watching right now is Blue Bloods. Oppenheimer took a lot out of me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I just got mm. a bit on like a hiatus of watching shit. My birthday was Saturday, so that was cool. Did some yeah. like birthday stuff. That's been about yeah. it. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, but I am excited to go see Ghostbusters, as you know. Um, next week, we are making Marvin watch Ghostbusters, the original to celebrate okay. very excited to mm-hmm. hear marvin's opinion on that yeah hope it's not trash hey listen this is like riding the lightning <laughs> that's how i feel every time like when i made you watch superman i'm just like 
Oh fuck. <laughs> yep. We'll see. Uh, I can't imagine Ghostbusters being. I mean, I know of Ghostbusters. Obviously, yeah, I can't yeah. imagine it being bad. It's not. And if you say it is, we're not friends anymore. And that's just how it yeah, is. You always say that, but I know. But you haven't let me down yet. So, yeah. did you guys um, have you guys seen the? Oh man, I I can't remember what it's called. Fuck, I think they called it like the dark children's story something universe that they're doing i saw it on twitter earlier Based so you know the, the, well you know the winnie the pooh like blood and honey movie the horror movie with winnie the pooh oh yes. i did see what you're talking about apparently they're making a universe of yeah, i saw this <laughs> of horror movies based off of these like children's stories okay. um uh, there was like a specific like, yeah because we got like a mickey mouse one coming too like all the ones that are um no longer patent protected or ip yeah. protected uh, but there was a specific name to it that i was it was oh it's called um so yeah okay this was the news the the makers of winnie the pooh blood and honey are doubling down on their fairy tale turned horror movie universe called the so it's going to all tie into like a an ultimate movie like Avengers Endgame basically called Pooniverse Monsters Pooniverse. Assemble. <laughs> um, okay. So that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, I mean it's yeah. funny. Hey, it's creative, you know. Because this is this is all tied to <laughs> the actually uh, not. Wait, is this tied to? No, this isn't tied to like uh, the Mickey Mouse no. becoming free, whatever the fuck. No, what no, no. That? Well, no. You know this what I'm is talking about right. Yes, but this is similar in that. They're able to do this because Winnie the Pooh is public domain, so they can do whatever the fuck they want with it. They can and make it. Yeah, that, how long? Has well, that been? that's what he's saying, Mike. Mickey Mouse is too, and that yeah, it yeah. is kind of like they're, but they're apparently. I heard they were all redoing Winnie the Pooh because he looked kind of funky in the first one. <laughs> they're gonna try and make him look better. Oh, it was twenty twenty two, January twenty twenty two. Yeah, is it tied yeah. to it? No, but is it the same no, exact? I'm saying it's the same. Oh yeah, okay, the yeah, same yeah. reason, yeah, that same doing principle. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be, I mean, yeah, it's like you could do whatever the fuck you want with it, so why wouldn't you, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's pretty funny. I mean, I guess we could just segue into the news. That was kind of a news story. What you got for us this week, yeah. Jesse? Anything big going on All or right. what? Uh, there's a couple big pieces of news. Uh, the Batman Part 2, did you hear about this? It delayed a full year. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. They, I heard about it. They pushed it back to October 2nd, 2026. Yeah. Um, which is kind of weird because that's about the same time the Brave and the Bold is supposed to be coming out. I think it's going to be 2020. I also nah. don't give a fuck because I did not really like the Batman. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was okay. I liked it. it wasn't that great to me, personally. But, that's yeah, they're blaming it on a, a lack of stages, I guess, is to be the main reason. So this is like, I guess, a domino of effect stages? of the strikes. Yeah, uh, yeah stages oh, like where they can build. Uh, sets oh, and props and stuff. Everything's too crowded. So like everybody's everything's too crowded because <laughs> yeah, they're everybody's pushing production around a different wow. movies and they're booking stuff for different stuff. So they just haven't been able to build the sets, I guess. So yeah. I think uh, I'm sure some of it has to do with like COVID and whatnot. Yeah, that didn't help either. Mm. Um, yeah. All right. Well, a lot uh, of the uh, the James Gunn mm. sycophants are convinced that this is. James Gunn's effort to tank it and cancel it. Uh, oh, he has that much influence. Okay. Got yeah. It. I mean, um, I mean, he does have the influence, he, but I don't see why he would do that. No, he wouldn't want it because he's in charge of why would he want the DC to fail? <laughs> he wants it to do good no matter if it's an else world or not. He, uh, so, some people talk about him like James he's done. I heard Zack Snyder for some reason. Well, no, I did say Zack Snyder. I said the Zack Snyder sycophants. Get it together, Marvin. Yeah. No, but I thought you were saying <laughs> I know, Zach, I know, I know. Uh, Zack Snyder has that much influence. No, no, no. Zack Snyder has zero influence, in fact. That's why I was yeah, yeah, that's why I was confused. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, try. Um So yeah, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. I mean, that's the, that does they don't mean anything. It's just that's just stupid nonsense. But yeah, I did see that. And yeah. it's like movies get delayed all the time. It's like not that big of a deal. Yeah. But I I, I am still curious as like how is this like whatever i don't understand what his plan is for this whole thing because they also just announced that they are that a live action uh teen titans is in production right yeah that's Big. in the news oh, okay oh. sorry do you guys like yeah. the teen titans cartoon network show i never watched yeah, it good. i love that show 
Damn. Yeah, okay. it was. Uh, all right, I might as well go to it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Teen Titans Go Live Action. The 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 anime was like four hundred episodes or something. It was just like uh, X Men. It was like eight eight seasons or something with like twenty to thirty episodes a season. Spun off a movie and a comic or a comic book movie. Um, oh no, sorry, movie. Uh, what? Anyhow. <laughs> Well, anyway. Ah, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, that's right. I see the comic book movie division of Warner Brothers' is, uh, Discovery has tapped Anna Nogira to create uh, the, the script for Teen Titans Go Live Action. She's also tied to the Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Um, but she came out of nowhere. She had an acting mm. career where she was in Vampire Diaries and the Michael J. Fox mm. show. And then she wrote yeah. a play that debuted off Broadway in like 2022. And then like in 2023... It was, she was like, I'm working on DC Supergirl. Hmm. And now it's an ad announced that she's doing Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow and Teen Titans Go. So apparently so that play must have fucking been industry amazing. Plant. <laughs> That's what they say plant. about James Gunn, too. Everybody's just an industry plant <laughs> to like tank the DC. And like only when the one true king returns will it be saved. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyhow. Um, Sammy Birch, screenwriter of the Wiley e. Coyote movie that is apparently Oof. not going to happen, has, I think she said on the red carpet, as far as I know, it's ongoing. I think we're all pretty heartbroken about it. We hope it will somehow find its way home and not end up stuck in the vault for the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. WB announced that they were officially moving on, that they weren't going to do anything with it, and they did a tax write-off on it, so I think it's done. But she <laughs> said it's a tax to and sell it, so... Yeah, we got to abolish yeah. that law. We just got to get mm -hmm. that guy. <laughs> well, one that got saved. One that got saved, uh, Gary Doberman's film. Uh, he's a writer and director of New Lion Cinema's adoption of Stephen King's Salem Lots. Salem's Lot. Um, yeah, Salem's Lot. Sorry, yeah. What's you guys are all fucked up tonight. Both of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hit, hitting that vape pen before we start recording. This isn't this is fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, this was actually supposed to come out in theaters in September. Marvin's eyes are like glass right now. <laughs> Marvin's like fucking shit. He's fucking <laughs> holding up for dear life. <laughs> All right, God, I'm sorry. This was supposed to come out in theaters in September of 2022. Uh, yeah, but this that was when the merger happened, and so I'm hyped. It just kept getting. It just kept getting delayed and delayed, and then it got shelved. Uh, but it actually is finally getting a release date. It's not getting a theatrical release. It's a show. It's isn't getting it? a streaming streaming release in the fourth quarter. No, this is a movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, Salem's Lot. Um, yeah, this is so Gary Dalberman. He's a he's a big horror guy. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this is coming out you either probably the fourth quarter of this year is coming out on Max. So we'll have that to look forward to. It's been a while. Couple of years in the waiting, but they they thought it was going to get shelved. So, anyways, have you seen? Uh, I'm sure see. you have, Marvin. You definitely have not seen the original Salem's Lot, right? This shit doesn't even have a fucking cover art on fucking Google. It's, this one doesn't. Have, no, no, no. This doesn't. You're oh, looking at okay, the 2024 okay. one. The the original <laughs> one was a was a, yeah. a two part miniseries on TV. 1979. Yes, I've seen most of Stephen King's adaptions, especially the miniseries on TV. That's My mom's a big fan, so we watched all that shit. The second one was dog shit. You're the, you the second part or the second? no no no. There was one that came oh, out. There was another remake. Yeah, there was one that came out in two thousand four. Four. Mm -hmm. Not TNT. good. Yeah, that had to be terrible. Yeah, that one was not good at all. But then, yeah. The fucking Rutger Hauer was in that. I forgot about that. But the original one that had come out is from 1979. Yeah. That shit is good. That is a good... That is that is one of my favorite movies. I watched that as a young kid. Uh, that shit... Oh, my God. There's a scene in that... This is that, about witches or something totally different? About vampires. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Basically, so as you... I don't know if you know, we've talked about this. Stephen King's... Uh, his stories all take place... In his universe, mostly, yeah. yeah, but mostly in the in the, the like the same three towns. So it's Derry, oh. Salem's Lot. I'm sorry, not Salem's Lot. Um, what is it? Um, something Lot. I can't think of it. It's not Salem's Lot. It's a different Lot. Salem's Lot is in it. They all his all his stories take place in and around Maine for the most part. Jerusalem's Lot. Jerusalem's Lot. Thank you. 
Castle um, Rock. Yes, and Castle Rock. So, because he was from Maine when he grew up, like he, so he mm. writes what he knows. And nice, yeah. Salem's Lot is about a vampire that like moves into town and like the town starts to like get fucked up. But there's a scene <laughs> in this original, and we should make Marvin watch this later on. Like when this, we got to remember to jot that down when this comes yeah, out. Yeah, preparation for this one. Yeah. Cause be, uh, be there's a scene in this that has like horrified me to this day. And it's this fucking kid who gets turned into a vampire and he's like floating <laughs> by the window and he's just scratching on it slowly. Ooh. Oh my god, it is the stuff of nightmares for a child. But sorry. Is it uh how would you com- rate it compared to like Rosemary's Baby, like another older Oh, or, uh, I mean or thriller or whatever. Eh, it's different, can't. Rosemary's Baby is like a masterpiece. This was like uh, a made so TV. Sucks. No, it's a great movie. I kidding. like it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but it's I mean you you picked the wrong no, movie to compare yeah. it to. <laughs> that's just that's just what it is, you know. Uh I, I you know what it is very similar to? And I know that, um, I don't know if you watched it, but Midnight Mass. Mm, no, I need to watch all of those. Midnight I, Mass I takes a lot of inspiration from Salem's Lot, I would say. Okay. And I know Mike Flanagan's like a huge Stephen King fan. That's why he's obviously adapting The Dark Tower, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. All that to say, excited for the new Salem's Lot. I hope they do it justice. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> what else you got? Well, Miss Patty Jenkins uh, was talking a little bit about DC not being interested in Wonder Woman at this time, so it doesn't look like mm. we're going to get any movies. Uh, you know, she had to step away from that project. You and, have dual uh, Patty Jenkins news, though. I hope. She'll probably never direct another one, uh, but she was also tasked with turning in a script for the uh, delayed Rogue Squadron movie, so she, I guess, is going to get to pen that it one. It wasn't delayed. One. It was canceled, and they, they just announced that it's getting revived. Yeah. Yeah, they, I think they delayed it and then they canceled it. So, yeah, both technically. I'm right excited there. for that. When they dropped but, that fucking yeah. it's different. teaser for it like a couple of years ago, that shit got me hyped. Marvin, this is one of the greatest hype videos of all time. <laughs> you should watch it. Because she, she, so she's basically yeah. talking about, she's like, my father was a fighter pilot and I grew up like on a base and seeing them fucking like roar over us like as a kid like was one of the greatest joys of my life she's like my father gave his life in the service of the country blah 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 and she's like growing up as a filmmaker she's like i oh i like i had a goal to make like one of the best fighter pilot movies ever made and she's like but now i get the opportunity to combine two loves and she oh my god i get choked up because it's so fucking good and then she's (laughs) like she's like i'll see you guys soon and she puts on the fucking Rogue oh, Squadron nice. helmet, and she starts walking, yeah. and it's a fucking oh my god, it's an X-wing. Oh, got it. I actually am getting choked up. Oh, so good. I can't wait to see it. So oh. is it gonna be like? Um, I think I it's just it's gonna like dog fighting, but is it like similar to like dog fighting with I don't like know Earth's atmosphere or like zero G? Like could be both. Don't I don't know. We uh, don't know. I mean, the original Star well, Wars. So like, yeah, basically, yeah, it'd be essentially following the lives. It'd be like Matt with Masters of Areas, where it's just following yeah. around the daily lives of the fighter pilots. So like an Empire uh, Strikes Back, where like Gold Leader, Gold Leader, Red Leader, we just be following around one of the colored. That's how I took it. Yeah, uh, teams. Nice. Just like nice. like like literally like a fucking Top Gun, but like less cheesy eighties and just Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. that would but, be cool. Yeah, because the. Well, like again, dog fighting was never like anything really good from the Star Wars movies. Yeah, but, and as we bad. well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but as we've Sorry. talked about, just the unsung heroes of the the Rebel lot, like the 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 Alliance or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's why I love Andor so much. That's why I love Rogue One so much. Like, it's these stories that it's not it, like if you think about it, like. Logically, it's not just the fucking, it's not just Luke Skywalker and the ragtag group of fucking heroes that like saved the day. It took no. like a whole fucking like army of people, of things to come together to like take down the empire. And it's like, it's time some of these unsung heroes start to get some fucking love. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Enough yeah. of fucking Luke, enough of the Jedi, please. Enough. Sick of it. I say it yep. all the time. But speaking of, Dusty, are you, do you have any idea what this fucking uh, the acolyte is about? Uh, isn't it about the, uh, the 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 Sith from the the Republic area era? 
isn't I, that? Well, this is where my confusion is, is because so you might have a little bit of lore knowledge, more lore knowledge than me because you've watched the cartoons and stuff. But this says it's from the High Republic era. I don't know what the fucking High Republic is. But the High Republic, I think, predates the, the Old Republic. The, and the Old Republic? Old, the Old yeah. Republic is what was established in, you know, like the the new trilogy. I'm sorry, the um, the prequel trilogy. Like that's the, when Palpatine takes over, that's the fall of the Old Republic. So the High Republic predates even that. But I'm not yeah. familiar with any of that shit. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not too familiar like with the High Republic, but the Old the Republic cinema. lasted for a long time. Yeah. It seems good reading the synopsis of it. it. says the series is centered on a former Padawan who reconnects with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes, leading them both into a confrontation with darker forces that, uh, sorry, than they ever even knew existed. It would be cool if it's like a fucking like neo-noir type of like crime drama. Yeah. But, um... But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's about. But I mean, uh, I guess you have to go way back because what is it? Yoda and the the prequel trilogies, like the the Sith, have been extinct for what like a millennia or whatever the fuck did he say? A century or millennia? They had a long uh, time of peace, so you got to go remember. way way back. You got to go yeah. way way back to find any Sith interactions. In an age of light, a darkness rises, which sounds cool. So this yeah. is probably okay. So all right, here we go. The acolyte is set at the end of the High Republic era in a in a world of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers, approximately a hundred years before Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace. A former oh, Padawan. Wow. Okay, so I guess I could have just read fucking uh, Wikipedia the to the after prequel. all. <laughs> yeah, it's the prequel to the prequel. It sounds cool. And what's her name is good, in yeah. it? Fucking uh, Daphne um, Daphne Keen, who played X twenty three in uh, Logan. She's all grown up now. So that'd be cool. All right. Sorry to go off on a tangent. What else you got for us, Dusty? That's all right. We're on to Disney now. Uh, the biggest news, I think, is uh, Bo DeMaio out at oh, Marvel, of X -Men? just gone. Yeah, writer, producer, and creator of X-Men 97 is parted ways, is it's weird, what right? they're saying. Yeah, uh, he was a scriptwriter on Moon Knight, and he also wrote some stuff for the as and yet happening Blade. Um, but his company email was deactivated. Cast and crew member were informed that he would no longer be on any of the projects. Uh, Brad Winterbaum, head of streaming, television, and animation, uh, commented that I can't talk about the details. We parted ways, as best I could say. Uh, a couple days later, there were some rumors that may have been involved with his non-nude OnlyFans account and some creepy or unsettling behavior on Instagram. He has an OnlyFans? <laughs> that's all just guy? conjecture. Oh, uh, this what? guy. This guy has an OnlyFans? Yeah. He, yes, he did. Damn. Yes. Let's get Wait, he had an OnlyFans or he was participating in viewing? No, I'm pretty sure he had he had a non-nude OnlyFans page. Uh, oh, because... well, that could be anything. He could be fucking making art. Yeah. I'm about to get me an OnlyFans and Only oh, Dance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of <laughs> pictures of him and a little bit of clothing as possible to not be non-nude, I would imagine. I don't know. Maybe he had, like, the vague outline <laughs> of a cock. <laughs> but uh, also, apparently, he was a hassle behind the scenes. He was tough to work with. That was also some of the reporting that actually Oof. these reports about, like, some difficulties behind the scenes were when X-Men 97 was being created. So that, that was before all this happened, but... Gotcha. Yeah, no real reason of the firing or the letting go or the parting of ways. He has yet to say anything. And like I said, uh, oh, what's his name? Brad Winterbaum is the only guy who said anything, only to say, I can't talk about it except that we've parted ways. Okay. Well, so, good yeah. riddance, or uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't know. We'll see. Doesn't, yeah. we'll, we'll probably oh, not no. find out. <laughs> well, probably. Who knows? I hope X Men 97 doesn't fucking suck. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, he wrote, I think, the first two seasons already, and uh, he uh, Winterbomb. What he went on to say is that uh, what he he laid the groundwork for what our team was able to finish, hmm. and we have hopes and aspirations of already developing a season three. So we're proud of what he did. We've parted ways. He just kind of kept it business professional, you know. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but speaking of out as well, Aaron Pierre. Um, on the long delayed Blade series, um, is I think uh, scheduling conflicts or whatever, which leaves Delroy Lindo 
And Mia Goth is the only attached actors besides Mahershala Ali to this Blade series that's Mia supposed Goth to come out supposed November to be in 7th. That? What's that? I didn't know Mia Goth was in Blade. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> attached to star in some capacity, yes. Um, this is supposed to come out November 7th, 2025. So they've got but it, what, about a year and a half to get it together. And there's only three actors attached. And <laughs> well, after the, all the rewrites. But uh, I think in December, what Mahershal has said, I'm really happy with where we're moving right now. So let's move forward. But that's, that's. Uh, okay. You know. Interesting. <clears throat> oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, Mukesh Ambani's Reliance Industries, which is an investing group, made a $570 million offer to buy a Paramount stake in Viacom 18 Media from Paramount. Oh, okay, so this double said that. My bad typing. Uh, Viacom 18 is the Indian industry's um, basically uh, digital stuff for Paramount. They, they do all their, all their stuff in India. Um, he already had a 57% stake, but now he actually has a 70% stake. Um, so he basically bought Paramount's India division. He's like the richest guy in India, and he bought the whole division for himself, 70% stake. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he's also apparently in merger talks with Disney, yeah, which is expected to be completed like 2024, 2025. So Bollywood's about to get juiced out of their minds. Let's go. They're getting Holy a nine, shit. you know, trillion dollar injection from being merged with it because he just bought Paramount you know, India group and now he's merging with Disney. So that'll be interesting to see what, what we get from that. But <laughs> do you have the Eternals uh sequel news on your list there? I do not, no. Hmm. Let me enlighten you. I don't know if you've heard about it, but uh <laughs> apparently this is a rumor. I don't know if it's been official yet, but the Eternals I feel like Marvel like drops shit that's like rumor just to gauge like how audiences would react do to people it. People care. Oh, yeah, no, that's not that like was just bef- a rumor after all. Yeah, like I feel like they do that. I mean, which wouldn't be a bad strategy, right? That's like if, not bad at all. No, that's pretty but good. so rumor has it that Eternals 2, that what would have been a sequel, has transformed into another project entirely. Um <laughs> now this seems to track because as we know, Marvel's going through like a huge creative fucking like overhaul or whatever they're doing. Yep. And let's not forget, Eternals was the was really the movie that kind of like sparked the the downtrend of Marvel <laughs> of the MCU. This was the first Damn, movie. Is that the one? This was their first rotten movie. Uh, oof. Phase four was pretty rough. Well, this is yes, but this was this was one of those first movies that led into it. Is what I'm yeah. saying. I personally, I don't think this movie's that bad. To be honest, I think. No, it's a little underappreciated. You're right. I think it's underappreciated. I think I think it's different because it's it's definitely the first Marvel movie that like was visually different, very different. But right? I think our complaint was this would have been better as a series than a movie because yeah, you would have had more time to with this is a flesh story. Things out. Yeah, this is a story that spans fucking literally millennia here on Earth, and like I think having a little bit more time with each of these characters would have been better personally but overall i don't think the movie was that bad and um so i don't know people seem a little bit divided on it because um so like some people are like well what the fuck like there's questions in the multiverse saga that were started in this movie like you had fucking Thanos' brother show up at the fucking end, or his adopted brother. You had fucking uh, Patton Oswald playing the fucking goat guy, fucking whatever that fucking dude's name is in the stinger. There's in a there's a literal fucking celestial sticking out of the earth that yeah. no that nothing that has come after has addressed yet. <laughs> so it's like that's a little bit weird. Um According to other rumors, the Celestials' remains are expected to factor into Captain America Brave New World as the source of adamantium in the MCU. Um, Though Kit Harington's Dane Mm -hmm. Whitman slash Black Knight was reportedly dropped from Blade several drafts ago, we're assuming most, if not all, of Eternals cast would return for this mystery project. So, um, this goes back to before uh, Comic-Con, this year's Comic-Con. There was some leaked stuff that was like celestial's end of time was supposed to be the sequel um 
and it was supposed to be tied to like a wider multiverse time travel thing. So I don't know if they're scrapping it. Personally, I don't think they should because, I, I mean, I, I think part of what got Marvel into trouble in Phase 4 is like too much same sameness. I think they would, I think branching out and doing some stuff like this that like feels and looks very different from other stuff would be good for them. So I don't know. Just a rumor, but I thought it'd be interesting to mention. Yeah. Not we'll canceled, but be I mean, it is kind of samey because... It's something they've done before, whereas now that they have all the IP except for, of course, the Spider Verse and Hulk, yeah, right. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Mm hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of which, the uh, Brad Winderbaum, yeah, we were talking about earlier, head of streaming animation and television. Right. Uh, he actually confirms that a Nova project is in early development. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to see that the Nova Core, you know, the cops from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Oh. Mm. By the way, that movie yeah. Imaginary that we were all excited for, that not excited, mm -hmm. but we thought it looked cool, has a four point eight on IMDb currently. Good. Oh, about the Imaginary Friend. Or imaginary whatever? Friends. Yeah. yeah. It's called If. Right. Damn. That's what it's called. Oh, never mind. That's what I thought it was. Scratch oh, that. This is a different. Totally oh, different yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never this mind. Is this is a horror movie. I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah, it's called If for imaginary friend. Yeah. If is different. That's the one I was thinking. If of. comes later. Yeah. We could scratch this from the record. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> something I am fucking excited for, and I was excited for. Now I'm even more excited for. I told you guys about it. It's getting fucking hyped. Is that movie Late Night with the Devil? Let's go. Mm -hmm. When is it? Is it soon? It comes out on uh, streaming April 22nd, I think. It releases in oh, theaters shit. on Friday. I don't know if oh. I can go see it because I know I already looked. It's only playing in the city here. If I can get a couple people to come with me, maybe I'll go. But people are saying this is one of the best horror movies in years. Damn. Okay. Mm. And it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, somebody said it's a blend between. Um, uh, what was that old movie about about the TV station with Albert Finney? I think Twilight Zone. No, 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 no. But, uh, fuck, I can't think of the name of it. Anyhow, I'm excited for this. I've heard it's everybody saying fucking great things about it. Um, all right. I'm sorry. Nice. Go on. Go on with your uh, right. with your news. Well, the last piece of Disney news we have, um, which is it's kind of Disney. It's Fox. Mm hmm. And this is something that Marvin, I think, talked about last week. Is about a rumor. Deadline reports that talks are underway for a new installment of The X-Files. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. we've talked about it. Yep, yep. It's not quite clear what shape uh, it'll take, though the success of the limited series event 24 Live Another Day is apparently what got them onto this um, because that was, you know, bringing back Jack Bauer for yeah. just a limited series event from the 24 event. So yeah, remember how writer and creator Chris Carter... Was? dismissed oh yeah it's huge um but yeah chris carter dismissed such rumors in the past but he did say he had an idea for another story so i guess it's really just a matter of scheduling and and if jillian anderson and david Duchovny are are in on it but it seems like they have the wherewithal to make this thing happen <laughs> the last season was pretty good that they did yeah i i, I think as as in you know a huge x-files fan um my I think wish for it would be like to just make movies. If you're going to do, if you're going to do it, if you're going to like get the band back together and you have like a cool idea, just make a movie. Like what's the point yeah. of, of doing it episodically? I mean, I don't know what like budgets or whatever right. production costs, things like that, but I don't know. Like, I think I like that idea too. Like we've already, I haven't seen any of besides the first season, but how many seasons? 10, 12 at this point. Oh, I don't remember. So you haven't watched the movies either? Me? No. Yeah. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. 11 mm. seasons. Yeah. There's two movies. Yeah. One of which you, t takes place between. They take place. Yeah. One of which takes place between season six and seven, I think. And it's like integral to the actual mythology of the whole series. Oh, okay. Cool. Then there's a movie that's just like a one off, like Monster of the Week episode in movie form. Um, oh, okay. Both of which are good. Uh, that's what I would hope to see. The last season of the X Files was like the last two seasons of the X Files were fucking weird, Marvin. So <laughs> the original show, the original series, 
had its finale. It ended. It wrapped everything up. It wrapped up the overarching mythology. As you'll come to find, like, Mulder's entire fucking uh, reason for existence is to figure out what happened to his sister, whom he knows was abducted by aliens, and he's trying to, like, you know, prove that or whatever. Yep. So it all gets wrapped up as it should. Then season 10 was, like, the first, the revival. And mm, season 10 yeah. came out in 2016. And if you oh, remember shit. the 2016, Marvin, it was a very tumultuous time in our country, uh, politically, <laughs> and uh, still is. So, so season 10 had a lot of, like, political overtones, which is fine, but it basically rewrote the entire mythology of the series at, up until that point to be like, mm. oh, no, everything that you watched for the last, like, 20 years was just, like, government fake fucking news. yeah basically just fake news no literally just like that's what it was which is fine it, it actually worked it was it was totally fine didn't mind it but yeah. the whole season was like really fucking weird it ended very bizarrely and then season 11 essentially like rewrote season 10 as like oh that was just a dream yeah i think was what happened so uh, it's been and weird the last... metal gear story it's metal been... gear solid five yeah the great retcon it's been Strikes weird again. the last two seasons, but season uh, 11 definitely went back to like the roots of what made X-Files great. Okay. So uh, whether they do a movie or a show, it's fine. I'm still excited for it. I'm an X-Files fanboy. So. Yep. Yep. All right. Moving on to everything else in the news. Um, we got a name and a date for the Venom movie, Marvin. It's called Venom yeah. The Last Dance. And it's coming out October 25th of this year. Let's um, go. I know Dan's not excited about this one. It's going to make $2, but, uh, and it's going to be... Actually, no. well, what, how, much, how much would you guess the other two made? Venom probably more than, I don't know, how it's, it's Venom, so like... Venom and Venom 2, it was like $500 million and $850 because they released oh, like wow. in October around mm. holiday season. It's PG-13. They get oh, the, yeah. the teens going Venom. to the theaters, man. Yeah, Venom's also a recognizable comic book name and villain yeah do you think definitely um, not do you think todd mcfarlane gets paid for venom still probably not um, i don't know he probably gets some royalties I'm i sure. mean he invented the character but i don't know if it's probably owned by marvel right it has to be there's no way he gets royalties still. well it depends yeah on that yeah right the way they did it yeah i don't know uh we still have no plot really that have been kept uh, tight lipped on this one. Uh, this it is the only thing we really know is it's the directorial debut of uh, Kelly Marcel, who wrote screenplays for the first two films and worked mm. with Tom Hardy before. So we'll see if it's any better or worse than the other two. Okay, I thought the other two were kind of fun, they weren't that great, but who knows? Uh, I thought that, yeah, I thought the first one was better. The second yeah. one, they're both trash, lackey. But the second one, what they did to <laughs> Carnage is actually like. Somebody should be arrested. Hilarious. No, somebody should be put in jail. Mm -hmm. Put in fucking um, Woody Harrelson and that goofy ass fucking wig shit. Give me, a, get out of here. You guys don't watch Star Trek, really? So no. that moon is relevant. Um, Adam Wingard, director of Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, um, hmm. has a couple other interesting movies in the works. If you're not interested in the MonsterVerse stuff, he is doing the sequel to John Woo's Face Off. Mm -hmm. Marvin, have you seen Face Off? John Travolta and Nicolas Cage trade faces. Oh, yes. That's Great one movie. of my dad's okay. favorite movies. So I've seen all right, all right. A few times. Well, they're making a sequel, and uh, Adam Wingard is doing it. And he's, he's also doing a Thundercats Blade. movie. A what? So, Thundercats. Oh, okay. Yeah, actively oh, so working on the Thundercats, on the Thundercats script, uh, but Face Off had some delays. I guess they hired another writer to rewrite their script, and then they're going to look over and rewrite that script, as is the way of the Writers Guild in Hollywood. We need a Con Air they, sequel. That's what we fucking need. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, so any actually speaking of Nick Cage, um, he did this. This was an interesting article. He did an exclusive interview with Screen Rant, and I clicked on it and the, yeah. their article. They're like, we did an exclusive interview with Nick Cage. And they only put one question and one answer on this page. It wasn't, there was no interview. It was just this one question. <laughs> they ask him, 
They asked him uh, what he was going to do, uh, how the uh, National Treasure 3 thing was coming along. And, oh, then, yeah, and this, this is Nicolas Cage's response. Here we go. See, you're the one that brings these things up. And they go out and they eclipse everything else. <clears throat> no, there's no National Treasure 3. If you want to find treasure, don't look at Disney, okay? It's not there. That's so, a diss. Um, that's a... That's deeper yeah. than just National Treasure. That's fucking... Well, because they were supposed yeah. to originally do it. <laughs> They had yeah, said, right. like, oh, we're making a National Treasure 3, and he was, like, excited about it. And it was back when they announced... Whoever that guy Bob well, Liger took might over be, for... Like, they have a little bit of disdain for the whole Johnny Depp thing, too. You know, Hollywood, they... These guys run in clicks, and they run together, so who knows? I don't know what that would have anything to do with it, but... Uh, that fucking dude who Bob Iger just replaced, he fucking ruined everything. They had a lot of plans. Chappick. Bob yeah, Bob Chappick. Chappick. Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was about the time when Disney, you know, ruined Johnny Depp's career. He was a franchise character as well. Yeah, but what the fuck I mean, would, what would uh, Nicolas Cage have any, why would he give no, a shit? I don't, I don't, he don't know. hang out he with just like the way they treated him. I nah, 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 they don't hang, Johnny Depp but hangs out with a lot of Johnny Depp hangs out with Marilyn fucking Manson. Oh, yeah. Fuck that guy. That's true. <laughs> that being said, um, <laughs> Alan Rickman recently reported that Nick Cage is set to star in Werner Herzog's Dead Man's Wire. Wait, excuse me? Sounds... Who reported it? Alan Rickman, the British actor who's dead? R-I-C-T-H-M-A-N, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Yeah, no, Richmond. Rickman, Alan Rickman Richmond. is the villain from Die Hard. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's only one way to pronounce these all these names. All right, yeah. I got confused. R-I-C- hey, R-I-C-H-T-M-A-N. There's a T. That's fair, yeah. Rich, it's rich, 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 or Richtman, Richtman. I don't, I don't know, but he's an insider. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anywho, he reported that Nick Cage is going to star in a Werner Herzog film. This is Dead Man's Wire. It's a true story. 1977, Kentucky. A former real estate developer put a dead man switch on himself and the mortgage banker who did him wrong, requesting an apology and five million dollars. So, a modern day take on. The Battle for Wall Street, I guess. We've seen this one done a few times. Mm. Uh, sounds interesting. Nick Cage and Werner, Herz- 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 Werner Herzog. Um, and in quick news, did you, uh, you watch the Rebel Moon 2 trailer, Dan? I know you're super excited about that. I did not watch it yet. I forgot it was actually coming Wait, out. It's out. Trailer is the, the trailer. The trailer is no, no, out. Yeah. The show's coming out April 19th. It. Not too far away. And then the director's cut for the first one. How many views does this thing have? Seven million views. Wow. Yeah. People are excited. All right. And the last bit of news, speaking of Oscar winners and Oscar nominations, we obviously talked about Oppenheimer last week, and we're going to talk about poor things this week. Poor things. Um, yep. But we did talk about the holders one, holdovers once, and sure did. Uh, director Alexander Payne talked a little bit about his next projects. Yeah. Um, but he, he said he's going to meet. With his frequent collaborator Jim Taylor about writing a sequel to their original hit Election. Oh. It would actually star Reese Witherspoon as a grown up Tracy Flicks, and Witherspoon would produce it. This actually sounds fascinating because I love Election. You know, who's, who's Reese going to be? Like, is she going to be like a, a Marjorie Taylor Greene or That'd a be- Nancy <laughs> Pelosi or a Diane Fine? She probably like- would be. Have you seen Election, Marvin? No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. What a great movie. Matthew Broderick is in it. Yes. Yeah. She's basically like, it takes place in high school. It's a high school story. She's like, she's running for like election in her high school class president, but she's like fucking the teachers to try to like gain influence and shit. It's, it's by Marvin. (laughs) Marvin was so offended by the movie. He just fucking left. He just left. He's like, fuck that shit. Hello. There he is. Yeah, my whole shit went out. <laughs> what are you Welcome back. My internet. Cox. Yeah. Oh. No, I don't have Cox. I have CenturyLink fiber, but oh. I don't know what happened. Oh. Hey, it happens from time to time. Happens to the best of us, yep. you know? Yep. Yeah. All right. So election sequel. That'd be cool. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you heard the whole thing, but I was saying it's basically about like a high school, a chick running for high school president class president and uh-huh. matthew broderick plays like a teacher and she's like really fucking obnoxious so when he's saying she, if she grew up to be like a marjorie taylor green or like yeah. one of these fucking really annoying like karen politicians 
Could be yeah. funny. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah. What else you got for us, Dusty? Is that it? That's that's it for the news, yeah. All righty. Well, thank you so much for the news. Marvin got back yeah. just in time, even though we waited for him. Uh, <laughs> and now we are on to uh, the movie this week. Um, nominated for 11 Oscars, has 93 wins and 408 total nominations, and that is Poor Things, uh, directed by Yorgos Alanthimos, the Athens-born director. My friends are big fans of his because they're all fucking Greek. Um, this guy really, I've never seen a movie he's made that was bad. Lobster, Dog Tooth, Killing of the Sacred Deer, all great fucking movies. There's a couple of others that I haven't seen. Um... So, yeah, I was excited to watch this one. I remember when I watched the trailer out, it looked like very, very interesting. Um, and this movie, doing some research, has been mostly praised by critics, as is usually the case with a movie like this. Um, yeah, sure. And it seems like it's mostly liked among audiences, but there seems to be some people, Marvin, from a particular side of the aisle... And have a very bizarre misunderstanding of this movie, uh, it seems. Some <laughs> some reviews I've read saying, WTF did I just watch? A young girl gets groomed into a hooker. Grotesque, creepy, pointless, silly gore and cruelty. It's artsy enough to get critics and Academy voters to love it. I thought Hollywood stopped portraying prostitution as fun, rewarding, and empowering. Or... Self-indulgent art for art's sake, but not enjoyable for actual people. Um, <laughs> so okay. there are some people that uh, have very strong feelings, very strong negative feelings about it because uh, they think this was a softcore porn, apparently. Uh, I've actually seen that description verbatim. Um, but this is about a uh, a young woman, basically, who gets... <laughs> Uh, it's a young woman who's, who kills herself while pregnant and she's discovered by a doctor who takes the baby's brain and implants it into the body of the adult woman who tried to kill herself. So we have a physical adult female with the mind of a child and the movie's about her essentially, uh, growing up and experiencing life. Yep. Um, and it stars Emma Stone as Bella Baxter, Mark Ruffalo as Duncan Wedderburn, Willem Dafoe as Godwin Baxter, and Rami Youssef as Max McCandles. Um, yeah. All right. Let's start with you, Marvin, because I feel like you hated I, it. No, I oh. didn't. So I'll start here. So interest, very interesting movie for sure. Um, I came in thinking, you know, how good can this movie be? We This story... Is, is fucking as old as time, it seems, right? Like, yeah, the journey of venturing out into the unknown and mm -hmm. becoming yourself, that sort of thing. But it had a good twist. We, it did. We've obviously seen it before with Frankenstein, which I, of course, have not seen it. The original. The original. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah. I know Frankenstein. And I get everybody, the premise. Everybody knows. But Frank. we've also seen it with things like Pinocchio, uh, Hill. Well, we've seen it with, uh, Recently, the, very the recently, Oscar competitor Barbie has yeah. similar vibes. I have Weird it in my science. notes. Weird science, yeah. sure. I have it in my notes I mean, that this was. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I had it in yep. my notes that this is basically the hard R version of Barbie, like the hard R rated yeah. version of Barbie. I actually made a few jokes, and maybe Dusty remembered this about how this was a worse Barbie without having <laughs> seen it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I definitely was wrong. I really enjoyed this movie, and I think it was deserving of all the wins that it got. Oh, and I did right. actually enjoy this more than Barbie. I was just going to say, I would I would call this a better Barbie, to be honest. It is a better Barbie. Yeah. Barbie's, ve Barbie's very good. Don't get me wrong. But this movie was, uh, it's different. I guess you can't, yeah. it's not fair to compare the two, but if just. No, it's just. On the, the very, very base level, surface level. Yeah. Just like Pinocchio is the same or fucking yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, the yeah. fuck, right? So, yeah. yeah. It had a lot of funny moments. Like, basically everything between. Emma and Mark Ruffalo was gold. This movie was fucking hilarious. And Willem Dafoe played a great, like, Dr. Frankenstein or whatever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He did. Uh, <laughs> I I love the art style, too, honestly. Uh. Gave me, like, Alice in Wonderland or Willy Wonka or even, like, Dr. Seuss vibes or something. Like, it was just a really yeah. wacky type of... You won't have much... It, but it was very fitting, I think. You won't have much of a reference for it 
Um, maybe you will. We watched uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Um, mm, yeah. But this reminded me a lot of a uh, Michel Gondry film. Michel Gondry is the person who directed Eternal uh, Sunshine. Okay. Yeah. Very whimsical, like filmmaking and like uh, set design and stuff like that. The, this whole movie was filmed you know, with that like fishbowl lens. That's like very a very, Tim Burton feel. A little Tim Burton in there as well. Tim yeah. Tim Burton, yeah. Some of the sure. architecture. What do you think, Dusty? Did you like it? Well, I love it when movies get you in this mindset of <clears throat> this isn't the real world. This is a world. Yeah. So you you can automatically like suspend your disbelief of, well, that wouldn't happen or they wouldn't do that when you're in like, <laughs> oh, this is a totally different like type of world. So whatever they're explaining or telling me, like I can be like, yeah, sure. Very important for Dusty that part. What nitpick right did so you have could, that you were able no, to can't I didn't nitpick, have any I didn't impossible. I didn't have any nitpicks with this. No, this is <laughs> this a was a great world. movie. It was hilarious at times and it was awkward it was. at times and it really explored uh and, uh, human uh, humanity. Uh, it was great. It was thought provoking like mm -hmm. it, a good philosophical debate to have like what if um you know a child had to develop in a human body and what kind of perils would they plunge themselves into? And I could see that. It'd be like waking up from a coma and not remembering anything, let alone who you are and trying to mm -hmm. rediscover life. Like see, it kind I have, of explores some of that stuff, but it's really good. Yeah. I liked it. I uh, enjoyed it very much. Um, people I think are looking at this movie very black and white. Um, it's either, at least from what I've read, it's either like a beautiful tale of like a woman discovering herself and being independent, just like Barbie um, freeing herself from like the shackles of abusive men in her life. Um, and on the other hand, it's people being like, this is just an immoral sex fest. Uh, but right. I, I do, I, I really think people are missing the point. And like Dusty said, there are some really interesting themes in there. I don't even think the fact that it's a child's mind in the body of an adult is even an important part of the movie. I, it is, but I think that's just like the vehicle to like, make the point that it's trying to make. And that is, I think this movie is exploring like adult themes through the eyes of a child. And why would you do that? Well, because children are as pure as it gets, right? Like they have no world experience. Well, they're exposed to it more and more too every day with technology and. Right. But, but what I'm saying is like, children are generally neil degrasse tyson has a really good quote about children he like says all children are born scientists like they're outside playing with dirt and grass and sticks right. and like pots like let them explore let them be scientists that's like how they learn and you know children are impulsive and they have no filter and they just kind of <laughs> like do and say what they want like i you know it's yep. a really funny meme have you seen the memes of like um Oh fuck! I forget whose face it is. I'm not even gonna say. It. There's a meme about like what it lo when like kids look at like a paralyzed person in a wheelchair, and it's like just this blank stare. Yeah. Um. But like that's how kids are because they don't have any like social cues or, or they don't know about all that stuff, and that's really yep. what this movie to me was about. Um. Is that it's like being a child is very pure, and it's in this way that I think the movie explores like innocence and discovery about in the face of a cynical world yeah. about human nature right. like you just said it showcases how we like arbitrarily censor certain behaviors and like the, the way society yeah the way we impose <laughs> societal norms upon each other like mm -hmm. and i feel like you don't think about it very often just to, like being an adult and like existing you just like accept it for face value it's like oh well this is just how you behave um right. it's only with like certain things that have recently become like talked about more like like you know sex workers and stuff like that but mm -hmm. um i don't know it's one of my <clears throat> biggest i like I, catch me driving down the road you'll see me grabbing at every mean, inconsiderate self-absorbed degenerate out there like just listen <laughs> well well no i well, <laughs> i just mean more along the lines of like this movie obviously is like it's not just about like sex and prostitution, but like there's a very specific narrative with her with Mark Ruffalo where he's like, You're a whore and what you're doing is wrong. And she and because yeah. she has the mind of a child, she's like, I don't understand why you're mad. There's like a lot of moments in this movie Making that are really funny. Sex. Where she's <laughs> Mark like Mark Ruffalo killed that role. Yeah, he's unbelievable in this movie. But but she's yeah. like very like well, I don't understand like 
I don't get your reaction. Like, why are you mad? When she first starts yeah. having sex, it's like, why don't people do this all the time? Like, yeah. she, it's a very childlike way of looking at things. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, and, and you know, as we age due to exposure to these societal norms, like I was just saying, they just like, they become like, you know, every day Like you don't really even yeah. think about it's ingrained it. ingrained into you, yeah. And as we get older, we tend to get like more cynical and like cruel and like careless and like, sort of selfish in a way um but it's interesting to me that this yeah. movie she starts that way you know we see her she's almost like a sociopath in the beginning of the movie she's fucking stabbing eyes Stab. of corpses <laughs> and like she has like no Only the dead ones yeah she has like no feelings whatsoever <laughs> and it's actually as she ages throughout the movie that she becomes more passionate and empathetic and by the end of the movie she decides she wants to be a doctor to actually like help people mm -hmm. and it's specifically because she's a child without those typical limitations that children have. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. children are given a lot of like limits by adults. Like you can't say this, you can't do that. You can't, and some for good reason, obviously kids can't just be running around doing God <laughs> knows what, but yeah. it does shape how uh, uh, a kid grows up. And I think another big part of this movie too was about like familial kind of like trauma a little bit and like how children are molded for good or bad by their parents. And how they're oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I think the way she grew into herself was like awesome. Um, yeah. Because she was progressing so fast that she wasn't like trapped in some of those. The same way you're saying like kids are brought up a certain way, they get trapped into thinking a certain way. But she was progressing so fast, she was able to discover a lot of things by herself and choose like what she really wants to believe in without being yeah. Yeah. influenced too much by like what. Mark Ruffalo's character saying or what anyone's saying really she's really just well but that's not her own like beliefs. she was able to deduce a lot of things from what she experienced yeah right yeah. but that but and but she was able to like push back against Mark Ruffalo's interference and whatever because of the fact yeah. that she was a child's mom like it, yeah for sure exactly. she's like I don't understand what you're annoyed about <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> I went and did something that made me happy like why do you care so right. yeah I know I thought that was great um I don't quite really understand why people are complaining about the sex in the movie i didn't find it that crazy like i thought it was it was just maybe too many too much sex they didn't have to show it you all could say it was like, got a was little excessive right it was just yeah. a lot of sex a lot of dicks <laughs> a lot of herds showing tits well, it was just like all right we've seen we've you know we don't have to see it over and over at this point we've seen enough See, I actually think in this case, because we've talked about this before, we're like, well, that was unnecessary. I think in this case, it was important to the story and her character, because in our society, what's the most adult thing that you could do is have sex. Like that is by our societal standards, like the most adult thing, right? Doesn't get more adult Probably. than that. Probably. Like that's, I mean, that's, murder. that's, I, yeah, I would murder, say. Anybody can murder. <laughs> But like that's well, the thing. rearing rearing children having children is the easy part the most adult thing you can do is rearing children which is raising them okay sure but i i meant like it like a like like what like sex is the defining thing that like is the transitional period between a child yes. and an adult it is when you yes. have like when adolescence you have, yeah right when you have, right. when you have yeah. sex like you will become an adult for by based on our like society so i think that's why sex was so prevalent in the film um and it also obviously was like representative of like her freedom and her kind of just doing what she wants it's her body all that good stuff but mm -hmm. uh yeah no i didn't really find it that excessive like yeah it happens a lot but like there's a huge break from it too throughout the movie like it, it's first when she first discovers it and then like late and then it like it's that's true not there for a really long time and then she goes to work yeah. at the brothel or whatever um, but, uh, yeah, her, her journey, um, I think, I think the, the, the sex was like really, it was important to her story. Um, and, and like the sex scenes themselves, like weren't that crazy to me. Like people I've read, again, some of the reviews were like, oh, this is like a soft core porn. And it was like, was no, it? No, it wasn't that bad. It's not that, it's not that big. <laughs> go, go watch infinity pool, buddy. Like, I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. You're gonna say yeah, something, Dusty? Bad. Well, yeah. I mean, going back to like, I don't have any like gripes as far as like grab my normal gripes, but I do have a couple complaints. 
Mm-hmm. I, I think they really missed an opportunity at the end. I thought that she was going to put God's brain in the general. Yeah. <laughs> so that he could live longer with him. I mean, I, I immediately, like when I saw the goat, I was like, oh, wait, no, it's going to be the goat. But I initially thought like it's going to be God. Yeah. And she didn't do that. And I was like, damn, that could have been like they're her sitting there saying, hey, yeah, God. And he's, he's the general. But yeah, I, I him being the that. goat was also awesome. But also, um, this movie was great. I loved it. Uh, but I don't think it needed to be two hours and 40 minutes. Like, <laughs> they could have cut cut some of those sex scenes down a little bit. <laughs> didn't need to be. I actually, I, I actually think the last maybe like 20 minutes of the movie could have gone. Like all the stuff with yeah. the general, I didn't really think that was necessary. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't um, so. that that's probably my only gripe. I didn't feel the length of the movie, but I didn't really understand why that whole section of the movie existed. I enjoyed it a little bit because it showed like you're wondering like, okay, now she's in a situation where like it's dangerous, dangerous. Because you could argue that she was in a lot of dangerous situations, but he's like literally telling you, "I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna shoot you in the face. I'm gonna shoot you." Know. That's just so seeing what she did to get out of that one was actually more interesting. It didn't have to be as long as it was, but I was more interested in how she was going to get out of that rather than how she's going to get off the boat with Mark Ruffalo's character. Who, like mm-hmm. I said, was amazing. He did a great job of playing the I'm the womanizer and women chase me. And wow. then she showed no interest in him really. And like he turned into what he fucking like, yeah. oh my God, I'm in love with you. It's just funny. The acting in this movie from everybody was phenomenal. Yes. Um, yep. Better, honestly, than I think uh, uh, fucking the last movie we watched. Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer, yeah. Huh. Um, so, like, it's yeah, different. Maybe. Like, Robert Downey Jr. was great. Killian Murphy was great. But I, I feel like these two in this movie, like, really fucking just, like, crushed it. Like... They did, yeah. Um, but I mean, it is like it's kind of like the rom com section, so well, you can have more chemistry. I feel like between a man and a woman in an intimate relationship than you can between a guy and another guy talking about creating a bomb or something. I think you can well, have more chemistry there. Yeah, I like Willem Dafoe talking about how his dad flayed his fingers open. Oh like I was like, oh god. I don't dude, think it was the chemistry. The, the chemistry <laughs> might have been a little bit of it, but. I like when I watched Oppenheimer and I don't think I said this when we talked about the movie, but I, I, I thought about it while I watched it. Yes. Robert Downey Jr.'s performance was incredible. And like, but I don't think he transformed himself, at least for me. Like there was a lot of Robert Downey Jr. In his performance. I felt. He learned a lot mm, from yeah. uh, Iron Man, Tony Stark, that performance he did. He like, he's playing a person of course. Right. But there's a lot of himself coming through, whereas like Killian Murphy really transformed himself. I thought this movie, right. I felt transformations from both of these characters, from both of these actors. I didn't. So that's where I'm. That's where I'm kind of saying, yes, their chemistry was amazing for sure. I that that's like another thing I wanted to point out. But um, yeah, no, Mark Ruffalo in this movie was like unbelievable. She was amazing. Uh, the set designs yeah. were fucking amazing. We talked a little bit about yeah. that. Like the the visuals were amazing. The cinematography. And like as a comedy, because this is a comedy, uh, I thought the movie was hilarious. There are a lot of times I laughed out no, loud really, a lot of yeah. times. Um, yeah. A couple of the funniest lines. I Mostly took, between them is like the funniest. For me. Yeah. When they first have sex, when they run away together, uh, and she's like, why don't, you know, people do this all the time? And he goes, you've just been thrice fucked by the very best. It's, <laughs> it's probable no other man will ever bring you the raptures I have. <laughs> It was, I was like cracking up and then, uh, then, you know, she was like, she was very funny too. Like her, like her dry, like, like just mad. Yeah, the look on his face when she came back and said, I fucked another guy and it was horrible. He could only do three pumps and the look (laughs) on Ruffalo's face. Like, what the fuck did you just say? Yeah, well, so also back in when they first run away together, she's like, what if the tongue play you were to perform is that not happening when he like first starts getting pissed off at her and she's just like what's your what's your deal wait you're not gonna fucking yeah what, what's going on i thought we were gonna fuck <laughs> and, and then um my favorite scene though was when um he like threatens to throw her overboard and she's like so you wish to marry me or kill me and then they just like stare silently at each other for a few seconds and he starts to cry and he's like i'm, yeah. I'm going to the casino <laughs> so 
<laughs> it was really fucking funny, I thought. It was. Yeah. Um, uh, what are you but, trying to throw the old lady over? She's like, oh, you're going to kill me? Yeah. Oh, dramatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, overall, I, I just thought it was, like, hilarious that we're witnessing, like, just her pure and innocent view of all these things and everyone around her, especially, like, men just being completely stunlocked by it, like, most of the time. They just yeah. don't know how to, like... Be, like they don't know how to respond to her or how to deal with her um you know there's definitely the barbie themes right like the independent woman but i don't think that was like the central like premise here um no yeah it was more but, it was like yeah it was like people just trying to take advantage of her cause yeah because like, even even that. even the brothel owner who's a woman was taking advantage of her yeah so yeah. like it's not just about men and the dynamic between men and women you know um it's just about innocence being taken advantage of or yeah being gullible or whatever naive. yeah, yeah. And, and and one of the most i think um i think one of the best parts of the movie he says you know you're always reading when she this is when she first starts to like oh yeah that was grow big, yeah. he's like you're always reading you're losing the, that cute way you talk or whatever he says and he's really saying to her like i miss when you were easy to manipulate <laughs> yeah exactly because mm -hmm. that's that's that that's like the part She's of the movie too smart yeah, that's the turning point where she like does start to become like more independent and like basically saying fuck you to him and stuff like that. Yep. Um but uh yeah. Excellent movie. Fantastic Amazing. overall. I, I liked everything about it. I just thought that last like eh, that last 20 minutes maybe could have could have gone, but well, I'm not a fucking writer, so I don't know. I just it just didn't fit to me. Like I don't like I felt like we reached like a a finale when like she's going to get married and we know God's going to die and all that stuff. Spoiler. Right. Before so, we got to that last like segment, maybe like 70 or 80% into the movie, mm -hmm. I felt like it was going to come a moment where she like actually jumps off the bridge again. Like I thought they were going to, I thought so. She's going to like happen. Yeah. Like somehow or another, mm. it doesn't work out. She's not happy as herself. And she, yeah, unfortunately I, commit suicide but that I didn't like poetry i wasn't peeps. like i just thought that was kind of where it was going yeah i think for the majority i kind of assumed she was going to end up becoming a doctor because like yeah that makes sense part of her growth is like learning that the world is a shitty place you know yeah because that's really again what like being a child the innocence of a child is not so much like oh i'm a fucking dumbass i don't know anything it's about the fact that you are looking at the world through you're slowly a, losing it. Well, you're looking at the world through a clear lens as a child. Mm -hmm. You have no outside um, interference making you feel certain ways. And then as you get older, you start to see how shitty life is and you lose that fucking innocence. Yeah. Well, it, the and, more you interact with society, yeah. Yeah, and the innocence of a child is explored in lots of things. Namely, you know, Stephen King explores it a lot in It. Is, is one of the things I know you've seen it, so I'm bringing it up. But like, it's the innocence of being a child that allows them to defeat Pennywise at when they're when they're children. You know, it's right. So like, it's it's very similar. It's it's you know, I I, I love the way they explored that in this movie because it's just like, I don't know. It's because because she's on she's not shackled by the things that children normally are, so she's able to experience sex and like all these adult things while she, you know, while she's like literally a child. I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people had problems with this movie is they're like, Oh my God, this is so disturbing. We're watching a child have sex. And it's like, well, no, <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I can, I can see how like, the Christian right would be offended by this film, but I don't think like the Christian oh. right would be going to watch this film because there's nudity and sex and stuff. Well, in it, And that kind of goes eh. against, You'd be surprised because in the beginning of the review, in the beginning of the talk, I said, you know, from a certain side of the aisle, like the people making these. Well, comments, yeah, like, there's the uh, right and there's the Christian right. I'm talking about. Yeah, Christian I don't right. know. Like, it, it, like all the negative reviews have that exact same narrative of, wow, we're watching a child have sex. That's crazy. The and only, I was the, just the weirdest thing was when. She was like fucking the dad with the two the kids dad watching. With the two kids. Yeah, that, that was, was a little yeah. bit weird. But yeah, that was the that was the weirdest part. That Do was you, a that was a little bit weird for sure. But like, you know, saying that this movie's about grooming and like all this shit, like nah, that's, I, that's a reach. That's a stretch for sure. Yeah, like, yeah, it's weird. What were you gonna I say? I thought it was interesting how 
she started off calling him God. I know his name was Godwin. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if that was just, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it was like a play on his name being Godwin, yeah. but also him basically being. Gave her life. God, he gave her, her life. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was interesting. I also, I wasn't sure because she, didn't she, didn't she stop calling him God at some point or did she always? No, she call always him called God? them. Well, she called them like yeah. my God at some yeah. points and yeah. Well, because um, at one point in the movie when she fucked the priest guy, she said like, God bless you with something or something like that. A talent know, or something. Yeah, yeah because he fucked the shit yeah. out of her and it was yeah, great yeah, yeah, or yeah. something, right? So I, I didn't understand like, I don't know, maybe she just, maybe it's not that deep, but she she said God bless you with a talent or something. No, I, I think it was just was like, a, I think it was just a quirky writing thing. Maybe he was a guy. customer and he had a large penis. No, I, no, I get that. I understand no, no, that. He, I'm he, saying the specifically her referencing someone else as God when yeah. we only know God as Godwin right. Baxter. Yeah, no, I yeah. don't think I don't know if I, I think that was just kind of like a little, little thing, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, Things like make it, you go. Hmm. But like I said, all all yeah. the all these negative reviews. There's a lot of one out of tens here on here. It's just like, but it's all about like the sex. It's gross and unnecessary. Like, uh, okay. Um, what is this movie rated? Eight. It's an eight. Solid eight. No, it's rated R, right? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The MPAA, oh, okay. yeah. Is it rated R? <laughs> somebody, yes, yes. In, yeah, somebody in a yeah, it's rated R for sure. Like, what am I even saying? <laughs> in a, in a, like five dicks. One of the Rotten Tomatoes See, yeah. uh, reviews. Full I frontal saw. nudity. It's it's R or M A. One I'm of the, guessing it's at least R. It's R. One of the Rotten Tomatoes uh, reviews I saw was like, oh, man, good thing I didn't have my 12-year-old in the room with me. It's like, why would you watch an R movie with a 12-year-old? First of all, you fucking shitty parent. Like, how oh, how is that an own? Parent. That like, man, good thing I didn't get my kid to watch this with me. Like, you're that's a cell phone, if anything. Um, you can't see Wong. I mean, bro. but, yeah. Somebody that has a 12-year-old might have been watching... PG movies before there was PG 13, it was just PG and R. So there was a lot of stuff that they could get away with in PG movies. <laughs> Full frontal included. Listen to this review here. This is, I will get, I'm going to read this and then we'll get into the rating. This is basically more or less like what all the negative reviews are. <laughs> What the fuck did I just watch? A young girl gets groomed into a hooker. The trailer was a total lie. They made this look like a quirky sci-fi romantic adventure. I thought it was going to be like Bride of Frankenstein. Instead, it's more like a cheap porno movie. Bella Baxter dies pregnant, and they implant her baby's brain into her body so she has the mind of an infant. Immediately, all the men around her want to screw her and notice how pretty she is. The father even tries to pawn her off on his assistant, which definitely not the case. He he no, realizes what? that the assistant's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like, I see the happy. way you two look at each other. I know what love look likes. What would you would you consider it? Yeah. Once Bella, he's like, I'm sorry for my perverse thoughts. He's like, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? She's an adult. Once Bella finds out how to masturbate, she is obsessed with sex. And for the next two hours, we watch a girl who has the mentality of a child screw a bunch of men, all of <laughs> who are taking advantage of her. She even goes to a brothel, and although she agrees to it, we watch her get raped by old men. Dongs swinging in the air and all. The audience didn't know whether to laugh or be disturbed. The one who comes on to her first is Max. Max in quotations, the scientist's assistant. He is supposed to be the good guy here. He is such a loser, he could never get a girl on his own. He needs to manipulate what? a child. A typical oh molester God. to which the audience <sighs> is supposed to have empathy for. Sick. This movie what? should have been 45 shorter. The sex scenes were too long. I was like, okay, enough already. We get it. People were groaning in the theater. Two stars for art director. The steam punk setting was cool but wasted this movie went around in circles sex 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 yawn two stars what a stinker of a perverted film wow yeah no one wanted her to be a prostitute besides herself and the fucking <laughs> right uh prostitute the mistress. lady whatever the mistress lady yeah well that's the thing it's yeah. like at every at every cross she was condoned for every bad thing she did at every crossroads <laughs> she can't it, nothing not but, but nothing she did was bad is the thing. No, right. She had problems no. and was looking for solutions. Bad and was, 
society. It was given opportunities and well, that's what I'm saying. She she looked society. at everything from a very logical and childlike position where it's like yeah. there's no emotion there because she has no experience for it. So like she goes to the brothel and the woman's like, Hey, you need money? Fuck this dude for three yeah. minutes and you get some money. And she's like, hmm, that sounds great. That sounds good. I like sex. I need money. 20 perfect, for you, 10 for logical. me. Yeah. Perfect situation. And then everybody yeah. else is like, you fucking whore. That's the you worst whore, thing a yeah. woman could do. And she's like, why? I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the, the, the review is hilarious because you just completely missed the entire point of the movie. She does nothing in this movie that she herself doesn't want to do. Right? right. Like yeah. she runs away with him because she wants to do it. She doesn't give a fuck what God and the other dude says. She does everything that she wants to do. She takes the money and gives it to the fucking homeless people that get stolen from her. Like there's just a lot yeah. of stuff that it's everything she does is she does for herself. Well, and there's a message in that too. Like uh, the, the uh, assistant guy wanted to stop her, but she drugged him. But God, Godwin didn't stop her here because he knew that she was an experiment and he wanted to see where the experiment went. So there's a message there in saying, like, you know, not letting your kids run loose, but also not helicopter parent to name them. You got to find yeah. kind of a little bit of a middle ground. When they were, I think that was, they were in, was that, it was Athens, I believe, where they saw like all the homeless people in the desert or, or whatever. That was Athens, right? No, yeah, that was stopped. no, no, no. That wasn't. No, Athens. they were supposed to go to Athens. They went to Alexandria. That was, Alexa it was oh, Alexandria. Alexandria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was well, that one. That that, was... Okay, that's a grab because when she's like, <laughs> "Where are we going?" I thought he said Athens, and they ended up in Alexandria. I'm like, "Why the fuck are they in Alexandria?" Well, that's where they were going, but they got kicked off at the next stop because yes. they ran out of money. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. But I thought that yeah. was like a pivotal moment and pivotal moment in the story because she, I feel like she didn't show like a lot of. Real Alexandria emotion. is not that far from Greece, by the way. Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Oh, okay. Yeah. She didn't okay. show like a lot of real emotion until she saw like those homeless people and then she started yeah. like bawling. And I thought that was like a real shift in her mm -hmm. like coming has, of whatever, you know. She learned more empathy. Coming yeah. of age or whatever you want to call it, I guess. Yeah. Yep. For sure. I thought that was, yeah. Um, one like last the, why funny... am I laying on feather fucking downs and there's babies lying dead next to their mothers? Exactly. I found yeah, yeah. Uh, I, f I found Dusty's uh, IMDb post. Uh, most of it made no sense. How did Bella progress that quickly without aging with her child's brain? She went from mm. barely being able to say one word to speaking normal and then engaging in adult courtship and sexual interaction. Oh, that's the gripe. Yeah, we don't have the time jumps though, do we? Ooh, but but either way, why would that be the thing? Like that's the gripe. You're watching this movie that is like super fucking surreal, like. And that's yeah, the again, thing you're fucking, not you, I'm just saying. I would be griping about these things if this was like, they tried to say this is an America today or this is no, in the world today. it's a today. surrealist would, film. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, but the, the fact that they put it in an alternate world and like you can, like you don't need to complain about that stuff. Just no, it's fantasy. It. Like, the dude's yeah, got there's fucking a gas fucking hooked up and he's burning yeah, bubbles say, yeah. out of the air. Like I didn't really understand on. that. Uh, I thought it was a couple of funny things with like the world that they were in, like, he was driving a buggy that was the carriage like, that had no horse. So it had a horse head on the front, but it was mm -hmm. like uh like an automobile, yeah. basically. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of like, there's a couple of little yeah. like a lot of that funny little things in that. It was pretty funny. Vile and sick, masqueraded as a Frankenstein movie. <laughs> <laughs> why is this why is this film so vile? Its main story is the innocence of a child thrown into an adult world. Like, all right, whatever. I can't even. It's, this is so what I'm what's saying. the original Frankenstein about besides he comes alive and he's just about a scientist a who reanimates a dead guy and he's a monster, but mm -hmm. he's gentle. He gets, they get burned. They get burned by the town or some shit. Is that what happens? Well, no. The town sees him as a monster and they like go after him. Pitchforks, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah I mean. But he's okay. not really a monster. Like, I mean, he is visually, but it's about like. That, People that, are scared yeah. of what they don't know. Yes, Frank really that was a cool little Easter egg too. How Godwin's face was kind of like mm -hmm. Frankenstein. All up. Frankenstein yeah, is about dad like did all this experience. That's one another crazy. thing I like about this movie is they explained everything. There were no questions left. Like, who was she? Where her parents didn't really exist. You know, fucking just explained it all. 
all the answers. When they when he was explaining that how he couldn't bust a nut, that shit was so funny. Like it takes <laughs> the power, the, the power of fucking North the England power or whatever the, the fuck he said, North London or something. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Um, to finish <laughs> answering your question, Marvin, Frankenstein's monster basically seeks affection and gets oh. you know, yeah gets hunted. So this just movie. like Kong and all <laughs> the other stories. Yeah, like that. similar similar story. But and just like this movie, kind of. I know. <laughs> but uh yeah, because I mean, yeah, his uh what Mark Ruffles character went mad. Although, he, yeah, hers he, hers wasn't really that much about affection, I guess, to be fair. It was more no. just about learning. Mm-hmm. Like it was just like learned experience of learning. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. But she it didn't really show like ever really show like any type of No, it's it's really besides ab- the empathy <clears throat> for the kids in the desert or the homeless people in the desert and for her god went about to die right like which she never learns about <clears throat> we as the audience understand that well she gave that money to those sailors and they're obviously not going to go give it to those there. fucking yeah, poor obviously. people yeah. she did not learn that experience but everybody watching was like oh my oh, gosh what the, what a dumb yeah. thing to do to trust these strangers with all that money but it does it it's I think they did that to show like she that she yes. wasn't fully like she's still learning she's still kind I disagree. of a child. Yes, so. but yes, but also what you guys aren't mentioning is that the dude, the um the black dude, he told her that the people down there, yes, they're suffering, but they're not good people. Like they'll kill you for what yeah, you have. Right. He so, was the pessimist to her optimism, and he the, brought her down a level a little but, bit, but not but that, all the way. But yeah, but that scene wasn't really about like, ah, oh, she's got so much to learn. It's just like it doesn't really matter. She still did the nice thing, regardless of. Well, yeah, she did the right thing, yeah. even though yeah. she did the wrong thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's like we're literally watching what it, we're, it's what would happen if a child grew up without all the restrictions placed on children. That's, that's basically yeah. what this was essentially. She's, she's I mean, that doing one little scene was a parable of you can't trust everybody. Yeah. She's an adult. She's a child doing adult things. That's like really just what it is. So I, uh, you know, I kind of guess I understand why people would be like upset, like, you know, but it's not, there's not child sex in this movie. Like it's not, that's not what it is at all. No, nah, no. Nah. So, um, shut the it's fuck up. It's actually a, uh, over personality disorder where you're like super gullible and like super, <laughs> yeah it's called hpd oh um, damn you're just super easily influenced by other people's opinions mm. you're like extremely gullible damn so, yeah maybe there's some of that in there too i haven't really thought too much about it but i, I just thought about that possible I that was a thing yeah it's possible but uh yeah no i really enjoyed it um not much bad to say about it it's got an 8.0 on imdb uh i would give it probably i i think i would give it like a nine and a half to be honest i would give it a nine yeah deducting half a point because i thought that last uh 20 minutes or so was just just felt like the movie had like concluded and then it was like but there's more (laughs) that's all yeah the only reason is i just yeah i i just thought they would we didn't need all the sex scenes yeah i didn't i didn't actually it's not a big deal but you're a prude, it's, Marvin. It's big Favorite enough it. of a deal. We we saw we saw enough sex. We didn't need the extra ten extra sex scenes. Yeah, right. I'm just gonna give it a seven and a half. It's not Damn. quite an eight for me. Wow. Um, I I think yeah. I, but the again the length and the number of scenes it wasn't all necessary. So you guys uh, are prudes, my... is what you're saying? Yeah. No, nah, it was just overdone. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm joking. Um, but. I'm joking. I think eight is a fair score, but I can't give it quite an eight because I had, you know, I thought it could have been done a little bit better. But it was a great overall movie. Definitely recommend watching it. And um, one thing, I didn't feel this way, but I watched it with Christine and what what she said is she said, I could watch that movie again immediately. Yep, me too. I I was just going to say. I watch that again. I was just going to say. Because there's so many little things probably that I miss. A lot of our uh, reviews. I mean, a lot of our ratings generally end with us being like, would we watch that again? I don't know. I don't think so. a lot of times I wouldn't For sure. like I will never watch Oppenheimer again. I promise you that. <laughs> and it's not because I didn't enjoy it. It's just like it's not a movie you would need to ever rewatch. Like it just. Yeah, that's not one you have to rewatch. Yeah. And, and, you don't have this, to, but I would enjoy a rewatch. But this I would. Line. This I would definitely rewatch. Yeah, absolutely. It. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Watch Nine it immediately half. after watching it. Nine I don't necessarily half. agree with, but. <laughs> Let, let it simmer on me a little bit, and then I'll go back to it. I don't like to watch anything 
back to back except, to back except like marvel movies usually that those are the ones where i'm yeah. like wow i need to fucking immediately watch that shit again <laughs> but for this like movies like this you want to let them simmer a little bit <clears throat> you want to yep. think on it um but yeah all right all right well that's gonna do it for us folks that's poor things that's what we thought what did yeah. you think let us know in the comments below right down there you could also hit that thumbs up button that helps us quite a bit consider subscribing if you have not done so already we generally do these once a week um when we're all on schedule next week is a big week it's make marvin yes. watch week where we make marvin watch something that he hasn't seen but should have and next week he's watching ghostbusters the original so we're not going to get to talk to afterlife next week because you're going to watch it the week after no i'm seeing it on saturday probably and we record sunday uh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Cause it comes it's out, out this... Friday, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you going to rewatch it see. before you go see the new one? Am I going to what? Rewatch it before you go see the new one? Yeah, I'm probably going to do a little binge watch of, of all three. Yeah. I think. Trilogy. I watched yeah. Afterlife on the flight out here to Cali. So good. <laughs> it's so good. It's like, it really is so fucking good. It's unbelievable. But, um, yeah, so... Tune in next week, folks, if you want to find out what Marvin thought about Ghostbusters. Um, again, harshlanguage.tv. You can find all of our links there to keep in touch with us, but otherwise, we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See ya. Rasta. <laughs>